Welcome to Q&A Wednesdays with Don Purdom. Hi, I'm your host Don Purdom and today I've got a question from Joe out in Indiana. Joe asked me, Don, help me understand what is the real difference between marketing and sales? It's a great question, Joe. It's something that a lot of small business owners struggle with because we're not trained in these two areas. We're trained at doing a skill or a task really, really well, but we're not necessarily trained in the art and the science of marketing and sales. So let me see if I can break this down for you. Marketing is the process of establishing competency. A lot of people are going to tell you out there that the key to driving growth and marketing is to build relationships with people. And while that's true, relationships are something that happen over time. They're not something that just happens naturally right out of the gate. So if somebody lands on your blog or they land on your social media or they see a video somewhere or a billboard or a magazine article or a TV commercial, they're not looking for a relationship with you. They're looking to have a problem solved or a need met. That's what they're going to call you about. That's what they're going to fill out the form on your website about. So why are they going to do that? Are they going to do it because they like you? Well, no, of course not. They don't know you. But what they are going to make some very fast decisions about is are you competent? Are you competent to do the job or to meet the need or to solve the problem that your prospect has. That is issue number one. That is the number one driver in your marketing is to establish that you're competent enough or you can exceed their expectations in terms of being able to deliver your product or your service to meet their need or solve their problem. Now, how do we do that and what is the translation to relationship? We do that through a lot of different mechanisms. Competency really is at its core a process of answering four questions. And this is really the four questions of marketing that I like to give my clients uh, in their homework assignments out of the gate when we start working together. And that first question of the four is simply this. What business am I really in? What business are you really in? If I were to ask you that right now, what would you say? How would you explain to me what business you're really in? Could you do it in 10 seconds, 25 seconds, in a minute? Does it take you five minutes? When I ask that question, will you just tell me what you do? See, this is the classic mistake we make in marketing, is as we get caught in the trap of telling people what we do, but we don't stay focused on our prospects and what their problems are, or what their needs are, or why they're coming to us in the first place. This is really, really a big deal. So what I have to learn to do as a business owner is I have to learn how to think like my prospect. I have to learn to communicate and deliver what that prospect needs in their language, in their way, based on their urgency, not mine. See, if I communicate as a business owner, my mind is trained to just say, this is what I do. But the reality of it's who cares? What if you do seven things? And it takes you seven minutes to tell me seven things that you do. But I need number six, and I don't have five minutes for you to get the number six. You better find a way really quickly and concisely to tell me who you are, but more importantly, how do you solve my problem or meet my need? Those are the most critical things. So what business are you really in from the prospects or the public's point of view? Second question, what problems do I really solve? Now folks, I know you think you already know the answer to this question, but after working with dozens and dozens and dozens of clients, I can tell you, you don't know. I'm almost going to guarantee that there are things you have not even yet thought of in regards to what are some of the real problems for your customers that you've solved for them. So one of the things that we have to do in our marketing is identify what are the problems that you solve for people. And then we have to learn how to message and communicate to that. The third question in my marketing is who am I specifically solving the problem for? That is huge. You see, you know more people than you think you know in terms of the audience that you're trying to attract, the problems that you're trying to solve for people, the needs that you're trying to meet. In our marketing, we have to know who we're talking to. So that means in any one piece of marketing, we have to talk to one person and solve one problem. So are you a blogger? 
If you're a blogger and you're blogging for business, you must stop writing about three, four, five different things that you do in one article. You write about one problem, one solution to one person. One, one, one. No more, no less. You have something else to say? Do a different blog article. Do a different video. Do a different magazine advertisement. But here's what I've learned over the years. In public speaking, and my coaches did a really good job of teaching me this as a public speaker, that you're only talking to one person in the audience and you're only solving one problem at a time. If we're talking to more than one person, the odds are the person that we're talking to will never hear us. They will never get our message. Now here's what inevitably happens and it's always exciting. If there's a hundred people in the room, afterwards 20 of them will walk up and they'll say something to the effect of, Don, how did you know? I didn't know. I just happened to be in a place that they needed to hear the message that I was delivering. So, with that said, in any given marketing piece, you're not trying to talk to everybody. You're just trying to talk to one person with one problem because if you do that and you do it right, guess what? They're not the only ones that have that problem. And your conversions off that one piece will be higher when we talk about sales in just a second. The fourth and the final piece in this equation of marketing is how do my products and services fit in as a solution? Not the solution, a solution. So with that said, those are the four things that make your marketing. If you can nail those four things really well, then everything else in your marketing starts to flow and make more sense as you're building competency. And just as way of review, those four things are first, what business am I really in? Second, what problems do I really solve? Third, who do I specifically solve the problems for? And fourth, how are my products or services a part of a solution? So that's your marketing. If your marketing is done right and establishes you well that you're competent, the odds are very, very strong that a person with a need that you can solve it for is going to be much more willing to contact you. We still don't have a relationship though. And it doesn't matter if in your blog somebody's been having comments with you for several months. You still really don't have a relationship. You just have an acquaintance. So, how does this translate when we move into sales? A competency has been established, right? Your marketing did that. This person is interested and they are probably ready to buy. Now it's up to you to give them a reason to buy from you. That's sales. The biggest problem that people have in sales is that they continue to market. You must not do marketing in your sales. If you do marketing in your sales, you will end up having a confused prospect who doesn't understand and will likely never sign a deal with you or buy from you or take that product home that they walked in with cash ready to buy because you ended up confusing them. Don't do marketing in sales. You already established your competency. If you find yourself in a sales conversation having to convince them that they need you, you're marketing and stop. Become self-aware enough to know that right now you are putting yourself in a vulnerable position, you're putting the prospect in a vulnerable position, your competency is being eroded and there's not going to be a relationship. You should not be in your sales processes convincing people that they have to buy from you. But that doesn't mean you don't need to make persuasive uh, conversations. Sometimes you do, but that should not be the same thing as convincing people that they need you. If they feel you pushing, they're going to back away. That's when you started marketing in your sales. Don't market in your sales. If you find yourself dealing with any of those four questions that we mentioned a minute ago, you're marketing in your sales. Stop. You're causing a problem. So how do I handle sales well? Well, sales is a process of educating now. Now you are talking with a specific person, a real person, a live person, about their real felt needs and about what they're going through and about how they need this solution to a problem that is causing some type of pain for them or some type of issue that's keeping them from breaking through and they need your product or service in order to do that. So what I usually encourage people to do in sales is have a list of questions. Send it to them before the sales meeting or before 
or the sales call. Have a basis that you've done your homework on them. They're doing their homework. You're having an intelligent conversation around a list of questions. And then that leads you to being able to close the door more easily and to think through more concisely what exactly is in the world so that you can match up your product or service with their need or problem. If you do that right and you educate them, then you are on a high likelihood of getting that sale because now you're building relationship. It's no longer about competency. competency. Competency has been established. It's in sales that you build relationships, not in marketing. So Joe, I hope that answers your questions between those two vehicles. They're very intricately linked together. Marketing and sales need one another. Matter of fact, the lead indicator is marketing. Sales always follows it. Marketing is the guide. If marketing's up here and you're doing your marketing well, then down here that sales will elevate in those meetings and exceed your marketing because you built relationship, because they like you, because they trust you and you're competent. Now, you've earned the right for them to buy you. So Joe, I hope that does answer your question about the difference between marketing and sales. So thank you so much for watching into today's Q&A Wednesday with Don Purdom. Again, I'm Don Purdom. I look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, if you have a question about your business or you have an issue that you're trying to solve in your marketing or sales, then please email me personally at questions at unveiltheweb.com and just maybe, just maybe, I'll answer your question here.